Hello there and welcome to the video. So today we're going to be talking about the World Health Organization and their involvement in setting our dietary guidelines. So the World Health Organization, they set dietary guidelines, they do all of this research and then their guidelines go to governments around the world like the British and US governments and those governments then set guidelines based not solely on the World Health Organization reports but it's heavily influenced by them. So what our children are being fed at school and what we're being told to eat by the government and organisations like the Heart Association, Diabetes Association, organisations like that is heavily influenced by the World Health Organisation. Yet it turns out that they themselves are heavily influenced by companies like Coca-Cola, PepsiCo and Nestle. And Nestle, for instance, are the company that bring us Kit Kat, Aero, Rolo and all of these other chocolatey foods and cereals that are high in sugar content. Now, I think, at least this is my opinion, those foods are the cause of obesity. The only people who are denying it are the sugar industry. And I'll come to a report later, and I, I created a video on this the other day that I highly recommend you check out and it's about the effect of sugar on brain function and how the sugar industry basically blackmailed and bullied the World Health Organization in I think it was 2002 or 2003 to stop them publishing guidelines that told us to reduce our sugar intake to less than 10% of our calorie intake a day and they were bullied and some people were pushed out of their jobs due to that guideline. So why these organizations who are selling products that I believe we all know cause obesity and diabetes and cardiovascular disease, why they are involved in any way in the World Health Organization deciding on what to promote as good food to eat, I don't know. But I'm going to show you some evidence that states that that is the case and just how heavily involved they are in, in setting these guidelines. It, it, it's shocking. You will be amazed, I kid you not, by what I'm going to present to you in this video. Look, let's start with this from the UK government website that says that more than one in five children are overweight or obese when they begin school. And one in three children are overweight or obese by the time they leave primary school. One in three by the time they eat primary school. And I looked for some statistics on how many children eat a school meal. Because, you know, that's making up, what, at least a third of what they'll be eating during the day. So you just got to look at the statistics of by the time children are leaving school, having eaten meals that are made by the school and the school are making food based on government guidelines the government guidelines are based on guidelines from the world health organizations and organizations like that but we'll see in a second that even those other organizations are heavily influenced by organizations that have been set up under the influence of the food conglomerates, the Nestle's, the Coca-Cola's and organizations like that. So let's have a look at this special report from Reuters um, and uh, it says the food and beverage industry pays for seats at health policy table. So as the world's foremost health agency, the World Health Organization bills itself as an impartial advocate working on behalf of 194 member nations. So this is the World Health Organization and this is their about page and they say the WHO works worldwide to promote health, keep the world safe and serve the vulnerable. Do they now? So let's have a quick look. This is quite a long article and I'm going to read quite a few excerpts from it because it's really astounding just how fraudulent the world and the World Health Organization and these organizations have become. 
and it's money at the end of the day because it seems that the World Health Organization can't basically they're not getting the sponsorships that they need so they're taking money from once again companies like Nestle so its mission as the public health arm of the United Nations ranges from staunching communicable diseases such as malaria and AIDS to battling what the UN considers the latest global epidemic Chronic ailments such as diabetes and heart disease caused primarily by unhealthy diets. Increasingly, it is relying on what is called partnerships with industry, opting to enter into alliances for, with food and beverages companies rather than maintain strict neutrality. Now, let's have a look at this article from The Guardian that I reported on a little while ago, just actually last week. The sugar industry in the US is threatening to bring the World Health Organization to its knees by demanding that Congress end its funding unless the WHO scraps guidelines on eating due to be published on Wednesday. Now, basically, the WHO were stating in their guidelines that people should reduce their sugar intake to less than 10%. Now, it didn't go ahead. They had to pull back because the threat is being described by WHO insiders as tantamount to blackmail and worse than any pressure exerted by the tobacco lobby. And they're talking about back in the 80s when the tobacco industry was at its strongest. In a letter to Gro Harlem Brundtland, what a great name, the WHO's director general, the Sugar Association says it will exercise every avenue available to expose the dubious nature of the WHO's report on diet and nutrition, including challenging, challenging its 406 million or 260 million funding from the US. Reuters found $50,000 from Coca-Cola, the world's largest beverage company, $150,000 from Nestle, the world's largest food company, and $150,000 from Unilever, the British Dutch food conglomerate whose brands include Ben and Jerry's ice cream and popsicles. Increasingly, it is relying on what it calls partnerships with industry, opting to enter into alliances with food and beverage companies rather than maintain strict neutrality. Despite being tasked a year ago by the United Nations to direct the attack on what both groups call, now call a global epidemic, WHO has cut its own funding for chronic disease programmes by 20% since 2010. These diseases cause 63% of premature deaths worldwide, but the WHO department that leads the effort to fight them receives 6% of the agency's budget. Now, the World Health Organization wrote a, an article in response to the research that Reuters are putting forward here, and um, they kind of con contradict themselves. They say because non-communicable diseases contri contribute to 36 million deaths, or 36%, which is what was reported by Reuters, of all deaths globally each year, they are a priority for the organization. If it's a priority, why are they only investing 6% of the agency's budget into trying to resolve the non-communicable disease epidemic that's spreading across especially the Western world, but now the third world as well? Coca-Cola denies that soda causes obesity. Well, they would do, wouldn't they? It says it is committed to solving the health crisis. The Atlanta-based company has placed a top official on the steering board for WHO's Pan-American Forum for Action on Non-Communicable Diseases, a group that helps determine how WHO fights obesity in Mexico. Now, I think I'm going to come to this in a second, but it's worth pointing it out now that the previous CEO, I believe he was, of Coca-Cola for six years is now the president of Mexico. So, you know, there's no conflict of interest there, is there? And Mexico is also the highest consumer of Coca-Cola in the world by far. And they're also 
one of the countries with the highest obesity epidemic by far. Hmm, no correlation there, is there? No. Klinger and, Klinger and other WHO officials who work with the industry say they are careful to maintain control of policy making. But on its website, the Pan American Forum touts the benefits of membership as helping businesses avoid regulation and influence regulatory environments. Wow. It just gets deeper and deeper, but let's go on. The standards and policies adopted by WHO basically become the law and regulations and policies in many of these countries, said Daniel Spiegel, a former US ambassador to UN programs in Geneva, who now lobbies on behalf of the food and alcohol industries. A small group at WHO headquarters here is helping a panel of nutrition experts draft new guidelines for sugar, salt and fat in the diet. However, Reuters found at least two of the 15 advisors had direct financial ties to the food industry. Murray Skeef, a New Zealand professor, received research money from Unilever, the conglomerate with 60 billion sales last year. He could not be reached for comment. Esther Vorster, a South African professor, advised a sugar association and took travel and after-hours money to judge the contest for Nestle. Borster said she does not participate in discussing the sugar guideline. A third, Nala Huala, is a professor and dean of food sciences college at the American University of Beirut. The college is receiving $750,000 over three years from Nestle. 450,000 of that money goes to fund the work for a doctoral student who, who Huala is supervising. Huala said the Nestle funding was disclosed to WHO. WHO will not comment on financial disclosures by members of its advisory group. No. All closed doors there, but nothing, nothing dodgy going on. No, no, nothing to see here. Move on. These millions of dollars aren't going to influence us in any way. No. In addition, three members of the group Ibrahim El Madfa of the University of Vienna, Vienna, Anna Lati of the University of Ghana, and Vorster are current, future, or past leaders of a professional society, the International Union of Nutritional Sciences. The, science, the society solicits hundreds of thousands of dollars in industry funding for conferences. So, you know, no, nothing to look at here. No, 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 we won't be biased by those hundreds or thousands of dollars. Sponsors of next year's conference include Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Kraft, Nestle and Unilever. Nothing to see here, move on now. They're not gonna influence this. A letter to sponsors from Angel Gill, a Spanish professor and conference president, says sponsors would enjoy prime exposure and direct marketing opportunities with the key players and decision makers in the field. Nothing to see here though, move on. So the influence in Mexico. The industry's influence in Mexico is exemplified in the Mexican delegations to a group called Codex. The group works with WHO on food labeling and trade policies, and its guidelines serve as a reference for governments around the world. So now you see how it influences what our children are eating at school, because it's based on these guidelines. At a meeting of the group's nutrition committee last November in Germany, the five-member Mexican delegation included officials from Coca-Cola and Kellogg, but no one from the Mexican government. Coca-Cola is a major player in Mexican politics, while it dominates the soda market there. Vicente Fox, the nation's president from 2000 to 2006, he was a past president, was the president of Coca-Cola, Mexico, before entering politics. WHO published global guidelines for controlling junk food marketing to children in 2010. It suggested industry-led self-regulation as an alternative to legal requirements. Industry-led self-regulation. It's just beyond, beyond belief, it really is. 
Coca-Cola has plans to double its sales in Mexico within a decade. I wonder how they're going to do that. With marketing and advertising, maybe? Mexican Coke is made with real cane sugar instead of corn syrup. Now, I believe, and I've, I've reported on this before because there's so much evidence, that cane sugar is one of the most addictive substances on the planet. More addictive than opium, cocaine. It really is. You just have to look at how many people are completely addicted to it. The only difference is the, the effects like the hallucinogenic effects and the effects like a normal drug aren't quite as strong. And the cause of death is much, much slower. So it's not as if you can have an overdose of sugar like you can maybe with an opiate. However, the, the cause of death, the links between cane sugar and cancer and heart disease are, are very, very strong. And I've reported on that before. So Mexican loves, love, Mexicans love it so much they drink an average of 45 gallons of Coca-Cola products a year. That's almost eight times more than the world average, eight times more than the world average, and 70% more than Americans, who are the second biggest soda drinkers in the world. A recipe for disaster, said Kelly Brownell, director of Yale University Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity. Body measurements bear him out. Mexico now has the fattest adult population in the world, surpassing the United States. No correlation there, though. No move on. Nothing to see here. Studies show 69.5% of Mexicans, 15 and older, were overweight or obese in 2006. So they have the highest soda drinking population in the world and they have the fattest population in the world. Nestle funds diabetes. Nestle, the chocolate and sweetie manufacturer, fund diabetes. Do you remember how many people are having their feet and legs and arms chopped off due to diabetes? A Reuters investigation earlier this year revealed how food and beverage companies now dominate policy making in Washington and in cities and states across America. And that's happening in the UK as well. In Washington, the companies doubled their lobbying expenditures. To, this is just lobbying expenditures. This is just lobbying to get governments to make policies that suit their organization. An organization that peddle sugar and basically foods that have no nutritional value. So imagine that on top of all of the advertising and marketing. But the World Health Organization say that they can self-regulate themselves. Disgusting. Food and beverage companies also are also... Food and beverage companies also are donating money to global non-profit groups fighting the very diseases that their products have helped to create. But they say, we want to be part of the, the solution said Robin Tickle, Nestle's head of corporate media relations. I do wonder about these people, how they sleep at night. They know their products are causing these, these debilitating diseases, and yet they continue to peddle them just for a paycheck at the end of the day. Ten of the largest multinational companies have joined forces in a non-profit group in Geneva called the International Food and Beverage Alliance, the companies with combined sales last year of $379 billion are promising voluntary actions to reduce salt, sugar and fat. Their group, created four years ago, is trying to gain a status of official relations with the World Health Organization, which would give it additional access to the agency meetings and shared work plans. The global sugar industry with US government backing, reacted strongly against a WHO expert panel report in 2003 to recommend limited sugar to 10% of dietary, cal dietary calories. Now that was the article that I reported on from The Guardian, where they basically said that uh, it was tantamount to blackmail. Where is it? 
tantamount to blackmail and worse than any pressure exerted by the tobacco lobby. So with that in mind, can we trust these food organisations, these companies that are worth $397 billion and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars lobbying the government to put in place policies that are suited to their organisation. Can we trust them to be on the panel of organisations like the World Health Organisation deciding on our nutritional guidelines of our children? Ah, it just gets worse. The soda industry still disputes whether sugar causes obesity and its cavalcade of health problems. The underlying cause of obesity is consuming too many calories and burning too few. No, it's not. That's proven not to be the case. The industry argues that a calorie from soda is no different from a calorie from any other source. So if that was the case, it would mean that you could just eat sugar all day. I could just get a bag of sugar and eat lower than my required amount of calories and I wouldn't get ill. Now we all know that's not the truth, don't we? How they're allowed to even state that is beyond belief, it really is. Many health experts compare that argument to the long time denial by, to by tobacco makers that cigarettes cause cancer, which we all know now is the case. Cause and effect has not yet been biologically established for soda and obesity, but sodas are the leading single source of calories in America and Mexican diets, and they are empty calories devoid of nutritional value. Since the Industries Business Alliance formed in Geneva in 2008, the World Health Organization has cut its annual spending for the branch dealing with chronic disease like obesity, cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Its budget went from 325 million in 2008 and 9 to just 241 million in 2012 and 2013 and it's reduced again since then. The World Health Organization's entire budget is about half of what Coca-Cola spends on marketing alone. Wow. So although 63% of the deaths are caused by diseases like obesity, diabetes and cardiovascular disease, only 5 to 8% of the budget is spent on non-communicable diseases, according to Douglas Betcher, the acting director of the Chronic Diseases Office. And it gets even better. Derek Yak a former WHO Assistant Director General for Chronic Disease Programme said, the World Health Organization is really pushed into a corner by its budget woes. Yak said he was driven out of the World Health Organization in 2005 after proposing to limit sugar consumption. Remember the Guardian report? <laughs> it gets funnier there. After stints at Yale and the Rockefeller Foundation, Yak accepted a job as vice president at PepsiCo. <laughs> His reasoning, he said he thought that he stood a better chance of improving public health by working for the sugary soft drink maker than by working for the world's leading health organisation. <laughs> the World Health Organization has employed partnership advisors to seek closer relationships with food and beverage companies. One of them, Janet Voot, left the health agency in 2010 to become a vice president at Nestle. <laughs> Nothing to see here, move on. She said, I personally do not see any major conflict of interest. No, no. She said, I see much more convergence of interest. Mm -hmm. When the World Health Organization held a conference for health ministers last year in Moscow, which Vute had helped to organize, one session was chaired by Casimiro, the top Coca-Cola official. He said he was invited by the World Health Organization to chair it. I <laughs> just... I can only read all of this from a smile on my face because it's just, it's hilarious. 
Speakers came from PepsiCo, Nestle and the World Federation of Advertisers. They called for voluntary action and offered their resources and influence. I'm sure they did. When Chan spoke praising them, an activist stood up and asked Chan about whether the relationship posed a conflict of interest for the World Health Organization. Chan responded in her sometimes ebullient fashion. She said the opening lines of a show tune from the musical The King and I, Getting to Know You. It's quite amazing the hypocrisy, the fraud, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion, the, the double stat. I mean, if it happens at that level, just imagine where else it's happening in the government or the NHS or in other organisations that we believe to be above board. But it seems that if the World Health Organization is being completely influ infiltrated by these organizations, it must be happening elsewhere. And when you look at the rise of obesity and diabetes and cardiovascular disease, maybe we can point the finger directly at the World Health Organization and their guidelines because they're being influenced by the very organisations that are causing these non-communicable diseases. Anyway, it's my opinion. I'd like to hear from you in the comment section on what you think. I'm sure there's people who are going to argue against this. Um, and please like and share this video. It's probably not going to get promoted by Google or YouTube. So I can only rely on you to share it so that other people can see it and maybe be a little bit more... Um, educated on the decisions they make and maybe don't take for granted what you hear from the World Health Organization and even our own government agencies like the NHS because it seems that they're being influenced by organizations who really only have their shareholders interests at heart so I hope you liked the video take care and I'll speak to you all soon bye bye